Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, as part of our Horus Heresy army painting series, I'm going to be covering the 13th Legion, the Ultramarines. Now this is one of our most requested legions, and although we've done two different Ultramarine schemes already on the channel, uh, for 40k admittedly, um, there's been enough demand for us to do a 30k one, and personally I find that Ultramarines are one of those chapters or legions that everyone's kind of got their own blue that they like. So what I've tried to do is look at the colour plates, look at the old artwork in the Visions of Heresy book, just get an idea and then ultimately let it inform me but make my own decision on what I think's a cool blue um, for us to try out for the Ultramarines. So let's paint. Blue paint covers really, really well. So we don't actually need to do a traditional grayscale pre-shade on this miniature to get the color to pop. And also, when we look at Heresy, I feel generally the schemes tend to be a little less saturated, you know, a little more dull um, than their Warhammer 40k equivalents. And by going straight over the black, it's just going to dull everything down a touch anyway, which isn't going to hurt. So straight over my Chaos Black Primer, I'm spraying the model using Vallejo Model Air Deep Sky. Now this is an air paint, um, it's very very thin, my pot of it is anyway, um, and I've just put maybe two or three drops of thinner in there to, I don't know, 10 drops of paint. I'm spraying at 25 to 30 psi, I'm using a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle in our Harder and Steenbeck Cult of Paint Evolution. And once you've got a nice base coat, we're going to apply the first highlight. And for this I'm going to use Pro Acryl Blue. This is a much thicker paint. Uh, it paints very well with a brush, but to get it to go through our airbrush at that same uh, pressure that we're spraying the other blues at, I've had to thin this one maybe two to three drops of thinner to paint. I'm using normal airbrush thinner. I'm using Life Color, but you use whatever Vallejo, Medea, Citadel, whatever, whatever you've got, it will work just fine. And with regards to where I'm placing the highlights, I'm just picking a light source that's above and slightly off to the right when you look at him, either from the front or the back and slowly building that blue up in the thin layers over the darker blue. And you can see the coverage is so good on it. it there's no, uh, there's very little translucency to this blue. You know, it's, it's, the coverage is fantastic. So we can build up quite smooth layers because there's enough translucency because we're using very, very diluted paint. Um, but the, we're not having to use tons and tons of layers to get the new color uh, over the top of the previous one. And then for the final highlight, I'm using Games Workshop Techless Blue. Very, very similar consistency to the Pro Acryl blue, so I thinned it a similar amount. And this time I'm focusing on the same areas, but this time a little bit tighter, a little bit closer in, so I'm spraying a smaller area. There's quite a big jump between the three blues, but once they're all on there, I think it looks pretty nice. Um, what I found is the Techless blue has desaturated it quite a lot. So I'm going back in with our original blue, so the darkest, this was deep sky. I've thinned this heavily, so I've thinned this maybe three or four drops of thinner to paint. And now I'm just going to hit the shadows and come ever so slightly into some of those areas of mid-tone. And this will just richen up that colour a little bit. And just give us another nice hue and a nice tone, change the hue rather, give us another tone. And this is the thing with blue, there's just, there's so much you can play with. But the nice thing is, is generally, whereas with some other colours we might have to be looking to shade them with other colours, generally with blue, there's so many flipping blue paints and they're so different um, that you can just go darker to lighter and play around with the actual colour itself. I'm just taking my time and because we haven't had to do that pre-shade, we can afford to take a little extra time putting our colour on because it's one less step. Here we've got him looking a little bit more blue. Now I'm going to prep him for the next stages by giving him a gloss varnish. Now I'm using the layer polyurethane gloss. You use whatever gloss varnish you like in your airbrush or through a rattle can, really doesn't matter. We just want him looking nice and shiny, a bit like a boiled sweet. And this is so we can reduce all the surface tension that's on the model. Particularly when we airbrush with paints, they do tend to go on more matte. 
um, than when you paint them on with brush. So it's there's a lot of tension on that surface. So things like your pin washes, like we're gonna use here, an oil wash, they don't run into the recesses like we want them to. They tend to stain the surfaces, they tend to sit there. And sometimes we might get those horrible tide marks. Um, or we make areas darker that we didn't actually want to make darker. So giving them that gloss varnish just smooths it all out and helps encourage the paint to go where we want it to go. Now for my oil wash, I'm denied about what to use. And in the end, I just settled on black. Um, it keeps it nice and simple. Uh, I often use black when I'm panel lining uh, or pin washings I'm doing here, uh, blue or red. I think it works really nice. And I know some people like their ultramarines to look a bit cleaner. Um, so actually by not going brown and, and replicating a bit of dirt, we're just shading here. I want to take a sec just to say thanks to everyone that supports us over on Patreon. Um, we've got quite a lot of 30k going on over there at the minute. I'm working on a Dark Angels Leviathan, as you can see. Um, but it's the support that you guys give us over on there that allows us to produce two, three videos a week, bring different artists in to produce things for you, um, and some of the exciting things we've got coming up. So thanks ever so much for that support. We really do appreciate it. And you can see there, I had only super glued uh, his right hand in with just a tiny dot of super glue, just to hold it in while I was doing the airbrushing. And then I can just snap it off and get to the bits underneath nice and easily. Uh, you can use that, oh, what's it called? The accelerator makes the bond a little more brittle when you use uh, super glue. It's quite easy to do that with. Uh, or you can just use a bit of uh, baking soda to do the same thing with. But if you put just a tiny drop on, you just ping it off normally. Now, once I've done the decals, which I did at the same stage as that oil wash, because you may as well, because you're glossing the model, I'm gonna go in and give the armor its final finish. I don't want it super glossy. I was thinking about leaving it satin um, because I really enjoyed the tones and uh, what I was getting, uh, particularly in the mid-tone and the shadows. But in the end, I went for an ultra matte finish. But as you can see, this has killed a little bit of the depth that we get with that color. Um, it definitely brings the highlights to the fore more. Um, which in the end I decided was what I'd rather have with this model. A little bit lighter than perhaps that rich kind of royal blue that we always associate uh, perhaps with 40k ultramarines, or certainly I do. And then for weathering I've just taken a techless blue, so I'll highlight colour with the airbrush, but this time I'm applying it with a sponge and with a hairy brush. Now the sponge initially just to represent lots and lots of tiny little chips, so focusing on those areas that would take the most damage, so lower down the model, and then as we go up, things like the shoulder pads. And then I'm going to go in with my hairy brush, just paint a few more scratches, we'll get to those areas that were a bit too awkward to get to with the sponge. And then to represent damage that's become a little bit corroded, we're just going to take a very dark brown colour. Now I've used German Camo Brown here by Vallejo, but it really doesn't matter. You could get any brown paint, if it's not quite dark enough, just put a dot of black in. But a nice dark brown is what we're after here. You know, Burnt Umber, Rhinox Hide, things like that will work just fine. And always make sure to do just a, a couple of little chips across the decals and things. I think it just helps blend them in to the overall paint job. There's nothing worse than seeing like pristine freehand or pristine decals uh, on a heavily damaged model. You can see you need very, very little of those darker chips to sell the effect. But obviously, you know, you go crazy on your models if you want to. Now for the silver parts of the model, I just wanted a really boring, kind of almost dirty looking silver. And this is Exhaust Manifold by Vallejo Metal Color Series. It's got a tiny bit of brown in it. Um, and I think it works really well for this. And I've just done all the metal areas on the model in that. Now for the eye lenses, I'm going to leave the whole thing in here in real time because it didn't go to plan and sometimes I think it can be useful um, to show what we do when it, it doesn't go to plan. So I've chosen to go for a sort of jade colour for the lenses. Um, I don't like painting red lenses on good guys generally uh, and I also really like this. I used it on an Ultramarine's Army I did in the past. So I've base coated using Incubi Darkness which is a nice dark turquoise colour. And then for the highlight I've used Cabalite Green by Games Workshop. But for whatever reason, my wet palette, I'd over thinned it, I'm not sure, but my Cabalite Green just was not going on opaque enough. Um, and it was just making a real mess. I was like, I'm gonna have to do 20 layers on here to get anything. So what I've done is put a dot of white on my palette 
and mix that into the Cabalite green. Now, yes, this is going to lighten it up, but the main thing is, is by adding the thick white paint into it, I'm going to thicken the Cabalite green up. So by thickening it up and then putting the highlights where I want, which is along the bottom edge of the eye lens, it allows me to place that light there. And then if I want to make it a bit more green again, then I can just take the original Cabalite green that is really thin on my palette and just glaze it over the top. And that over the very light green will just tint it and bring it back towards the green I originally wanted. And this is useful as well if, if you struggle to you know, paint that really fine line along the bottom of the lens. You paint it as fine as you can and then go back in with your main colour, so the green in this case or your red or whatever, and then sort of nudge up against it to make it a bit narrower. You can sort of clean it up. And then pop a little white dot in the top corners, just to represent a bit of reflection on his lens. And because some of that Cabalite green had sort of splodged around, uh, there wasn't quite enough sharpness around the uh, lens. So I've gone in with some very thin black paint here. I'm just going to paint that gap between the colour of the lens and the actual helmet itself, and just help redefine that space. I think it looks pretty nice. And this is one of the old Forge World uh, Ultramarines resin head upgrades. And the final step, get a bit of life into the metals uh, and add a touch more weathering. So all I've done is taken my black wash from earlier and I've added in a load of brown, uh, burnt umber in this case. So I've got a very dark brown wash. I'm going to put this all over the metal, around the feet, around any areas I want to just dirty up a little bit. Now personally I'd be doing a far more weathered and chipped and dirty ultramarine, uh, maybe you know representing Kalth or something like that, um, but I'm aware that's not always what people want. But the nice thing is with this stage you could take as long as you wanted on it. Play around with your colours a bit, maybe some different browns, and just have some fun. Now all that's left to do is base him. And I'll pop the pigments down in the description that I've used, but it's the usual scheme or the usual uh, method that I use for nearly all the bases I do over here on YouTube. So here's our ultramarine. I am always tempted whenever I do these videos. Um, I've had two heresy ultramarine armies in the past, painted very differently to this. And now I'm sat here thinking, oh, shall I do, shall I do a third one? Nah, that's probably silly. Um, I did pick up Remus Ventanus when he came out. So I don't know, if you'd like to see me do character model on here, it's the sort of thing I do over on Patreon. Um, if you'd like to see one on YouTube, maybe if we get enough shouts for, for Ventanus, maybe I'll have a bit of fun uh, and we'll do a little series on him over on here. But I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope some of you like this blue. Um, if you do, let me know. If you don't, let me know. I'm sure you will. Uh, but if you've got any questions about the scheme, just pop them down in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. Don't forget to check out all the other schemes that we've got in the Heresy Army Painting playlist. So thanks ever so much for watching. Hit that like button, hit subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you next time.